from my living room. Crazy to think that, man, you know, back in April, May, we were coming to you from my living room. And we're still coming to you from my living room. But it's good that we all still get to communicate some way. And we're doing what we can to still keep playing and keep the music happening. So hopefully you have not lost your inspiration to practice and to try in whatever form or fashion you can to be playing music with somebody, whether you're doing it over Zoom or, I don't know, sending people videos and swapping videos back and forth. But there's always something to be learned and played. So, thanks to the Jazz Institute of Chicago, we're still doing our little video series, like the jam session, so I'll still give you some little notes. As if we were still on the jam session stage and we're playing a tune, and I'll say, hey, why don't you think about trying this? Or what about this approach to this particular tune? Or next jam session, I want to see you play this song or tell me about you have listened to something. So we're going to keep doing things. So today I want to talk about uh, rhythmic approaches to playing tunes. So when we think about what makes jazz jazz, I can remember being in the fifth grade and I played the clarinet and, you know, part of my daily practice regimen was like, oh, I practiced a couple pages out of my first division band method book and I was always supposed to practice like 30 minutes. I remember my grandfather made me practice 30 minutes. And then the other part of it was okay, I'm going to take the last couple minutes and play a song that wasn't in there or something that I thought was really cool. And I remember one of the first things I remember learning how to play on the clarinet was this. Did I know what that was at the particular time in the fifth grade? Not at all. You know, coming to find out that, oh, what I was actually playing was like a, a bass line to 12 bar blues, but I didn't think about that at all. And then once I really gotten good at that, I remember we had like a timing band or like our timing class where it's like, oh, you know, not a talent show, but like everybody do something or, you know, present something. And my thing was, oh, I was in the band and I wanted to present playing in the clarinet. And I thought that that was, nobody would have thought that hot, hot cross buns was cool. Or nobody would have thought that playing London Bridges would have been cool. But if they would have heard me play that, I would have thought my fellow students thought that would have been cool. So when that came time for my talent presentation, what I did was this. <laughs> portion of class where I presented myself. Not really. But later as I got more and more into music and began to think about what is it that makes jazz jazz? And part of it was, oh, this is just what it sounds like rhythmically. Or this is how the types of sounds that someone makes when they're playing the timbre of their instrument or things I started to think about. And so the more I got into jazz, I remember my stepfather was a jazz drummer and he would take me to his rehearsals sometimes, and then he would take me to hear the University of Louisville jazz band play. And so I had heard the music, and while I wasn't necessarily really into it yet, I started taking lessons and I started listening to music at home. Because my teacher would make me cassette tapes of, you know, r records, and I just listened to them. I didn't necessarily know the songs or the chord changes or anything like that. I didn't learn that till way later. But, so, majority of my early learning was just from listening in imitation. And so what did I learn about a jazz approach to a tune? A lot of it became rhythmic. So what I'd like to talk to you about today is like some rhythmic things that looking back on it, this is what I was really doing. Same things as what I was doing on that 12-hour blues. So with my handy iPad, great app for practicing is called iReal Pro. And iReal Pro is nice because it allows you to create your own kind of uh, practice tracks. And so I've taken a really common song that everybody will be familiar with, this one. Now upon hearing that, no one would say, oh, that's jazz right there. What Gerard just played was an example of jazz. Why not 
because one important element of jazz that is missing from that is the element of rhythmic interpretation via syncopation. And so when we think about precursors to jazz in New Orleans, you know there's a pop popular musical style, piano-based style called ragtime piano. And ragtime piano is very similar to what we had heard marching bands playing. You know, a uh, famous composer of marches is John Philip Sousa. When we think about the music, bum, bum, ba -dum, bum, 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 March songs, military march songs. And so that music had a particular form to it. And without getting too musically advanced, you know, there were long forms. Let's call it A, A, B, B, C, D, A, you know, for example. But the feel of those songs was made for marching. So when you hear those songs, it doesn't make you think of dancing or it doesn't make you think of syncopation. The first thing that comes to most people's mind is like marching in a marching band or marching in a parade where the emphasis is one, two, three, four, the down beats. Now, while there is syncopation in there, it doesn't happen in a way that it's emphasized. It's like saying, oh, we have four eighth notes. Two of them are gonna be on down beats, one and two and, and two of them are gonna be on up beats. So there is syncopation there, but one and two and doesn't give you a feel of syncopation. It just gives you a feel of four eighth notes while there is syncopation involved. And so, one of the earliest things that I thought about was like, oh, what are ways to practice melodies? And when we hear jazz musicians play melodies, what are they doing? Well, they're not playing them directly as the songs were written as if you were to read them in a band book or if you were to read them off of sheet music. That would just give you the basis of the idea of the song of this is how the notes are organized into a melody in a, in a given time. You know, and what they did was interpret ways to approach that melody rhythmically that had more of a jazz feel to it. And a lot of that involved rhythmic interpretation. And so let's take Mary Had a Little Lamb, which sounds like do, 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 very downbeat oriented, just like our John Philip Sousa March. And what if we add an element of syncopation? So let's say Mary Had a Little Lamb is a song that's eight bars long and it has four phrases. The first three are two bars long. Mary had a little lamb, pause, and the pauses separate phrases, little lamb pause, little lamb pause. That's your first four bars, three two bar phrases. The last one, oh, I'm sorry, four, one two bar, Mary had a little lamb, two bars, little lamb, one bar, little lamb, one bar. The last four bars is one long continuous phrase because there's no pause. Mary had a little lamb whose fleece was white as snow. So the song is eight measures long and made up of four phrases, a two bar, two one bars, and a four bar. So what if I anticipate the beginning of each phrase? We'll get this particular sound. So nice thing again about our real pros, I can change the feels and styles of it and let's call it a medium swing tune. And so a medium swing, Mary had a little lamb. Here we go with the anticipation of each phrase. phrases I anticipated the beginning of it by starting an eighth beat early. What if I did the opposite of that and said, well, as an element of syncopation, and what is syncopation? The emphasis of not the down beats like our march feel or our original version of Mary Had a Little Lamb, but the emphasis on upbeat. So if I anticipate, I'm before the down beat. What if I delay and play after the down beat? different kind of rhythm. What if I mix the both of them together? All right, so that's using rhythmic manipulation by saying, oh, I'm going to anticipate the beginning of each phrase or delay the beginning of each phrase. But the phrases are longer than just one particular downbeat. 
right? So particularly in the last one, we've got a whole bunch of quarter notes. Two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, a bunch of quarter notes that happen there. So what can we do to give those notes a little more interest, the ones that happen not necessarily at the beginning of the phrase, but in the middle of the phrase. So where we have these long, continuous sounds, it can get monotonous to hear the same quarter note for the whole entire last four bars into the last one, which is a whole note. So maybe I can change the rhythm of some of the inside notes. And you heard me do it just a little bit on that time, but I'll make it more prominent here. So you hear where I have repeated notes. Little lamb is all the same note. So instead of just playing quarter note to a half note, maybe if I'll make the rhythm a little more interesting based off of some jazzy kind of things I've maybe heard on recordings or maybe I heard at a concert I went to. Who knows? on those upbeats. So you'll hear ba 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 downbeat downbeats downbeats do 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 and and so the mere addition of syncopation not only at the beginning of a phrase but even in the middle makes it feel like a totally different tune. And a great place to hear this in the actual recording is if we take a song that we often play at our jam sessions when we're having them and when we'll have them in the future again was a song by Kenny Dorham called Blue Bossa. And we know that that song is on Joe Henderson's record, page one, I believe. And so when you listen to that song, it sounds like this. So I can go to my trusty iReal Pro and find Blue Bossa because I've got it in my library of tunes. I go to the B's. And now I'm getting B, E, best C's, the best is yet to come. There's the eyes, black and blue, so Blue Bossa has to be down there. Here we go. The song as we know it sounds like this. <laughs> necessarily the pick up we may hear da da do da 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 beginnings of the phrase and the melody naturally has a pick up but the pickup is a quarter note pickup so it's our standard bo ba but I made it up do da do do da 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 do da so you still hear the same melody in Right, where I've just changed the rhythm to add this element of syncopation to it. Other things we can do to a note. Uh, if I go back to my Mary Had a Little Lamb for just a second. Back to Mary Had a Little Lamb. So I believe in a previous video we talked about ornamentation of notes, of individual notes. What are ways that we can ornament any given sound? And the three most common ways. 
to ornament a note is to say, oh, well, what if we approach the, the given note from a half step below? So if the note is concert B flat, <laughs> approach it from a half step below. <laughs> or we could approach that note from a half step above. <laughs> or from a whole step above. <laughs> we could also do an enclosure, which is starting from a half step above, going a half step below, and then hitting the target note. So, for concert B flat, B, R, B, A, B flat. So, three ways to ornament a given note. What if we do that at the beginning of our Mary Had a Little Lamb again? Second phrase I did, a half step from above. Let's hear that. So, half step from below, half, half step from below on the first one, half step from above at the beginning of the second phrase. And then in the middle, I did an enclosure to the beginning of the last phrase. So, even these things already automatically add a sense of syncopation. So remember we talked about, oh, it's not so much the emphasis on down, down beats. Ba da ba ba be do da ba ba. So we get this element of rhythmic variation. So with our Mary Had a Little Lamb, we've talked about, oh, repeating, we have repeated notes, changing the rhythm of it, thinking about phrasing. Oh, Mary Had a Little Lamb is three phrase or four phrases, two, one two bar, two one bars, and the last one I think of as a four bar phrase, right? So ornamenting, do we delay the beginning of it? Do we anticipate it? Do we ornament the first note of it? Do we repeat notes in the middle? Do we syncopate notes in the middle? And so therefore, again, this whole thing of great jazz improvisation isn't necessarily always creating a new melody or creating entirely new you know, songs off of an existing song format, but sometimes it's just playing a melody in a way that gives it rhythmic variation that's based out of the jazz tradition. And a lot of the jazz tradition, or a big part of the tradition of jazz rhythm, is the emphasis on upbeats, or the creation of syncopated melodies. So, that's just something I want you all to think about as you approach playing any song of any tempo of any style. And the best thing to do is just kind of trial and error, where there's times where I say, okay, I'm gonna figure out how many phrases are in this song, or what's the form of this song, and which part of it am I gonna ornament? And sometimes I'll do it like I just did it with Mary Had a Little Lamb, at the beginning of each phrase. Sometimes it becomes, oh, I'll make a mathematical idea out of it. Okay, every two bars I'm gonna play an approach tone to something that will happen on the upbeat. So therefore, is our syncopation to give us to the downbeat of a melody. Or sometimes it'll just be random, where it's like, oh, I'll do it based off of what I think music sounds like. And what's the important ways we talked about of having an idea about jazz? When I was in the fifth grade practicing that clarinet, I didn't just pick up the clarinet and start playing that blues and because I knew what jazz was. I had no idea what it really kind of was, but I had heard it before. And so again, the most important thing you can do if you really want to learn how to play this music is really make it a point to listen to it. Because therefore, it's just like language, the more you listen, the more you're able to communicate. And no one starts talking as a kid just from, oh, one day I just decided to talk. We have to have some kind of reference point. We've heard a bunch of words before. We've heard sentences before. We've heard all kinds of vernacular and things that go into communication, and we just start imitating. So the more you imitate, the more you're expanding your jazz language, but part of it also is really thinking about what is it that's happening that you hear. And so, imitating these things. So, big thing to think about, syncopation. Syncopation and what those 
professors, as they called them in New Orleans back in the days, what they were doing with those march tunes, ragging the rhythms, where those songs were very downbeat oriented. Oh, they just added elements of syncopation, whether it's repeating notes, approach notes, or making more emphasis on the beats in between. Not necessarily so much about the downbeats, but the notes in between on the upbeats. So that's my little talk for today. And I'll see you all some more. So please keep practicing. And if you all have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me. You can reach me at jazzfuture at hotmail.com. And I love to talk, as you all know from the sessions, about anything. So we can talk about playing or what am I practicing or what are you practicing or what do you want to listen to? Or maybe you can tell me something to listen to. But I look forward to seeing and hearing from you guys in the future. All right. Stay safe. Thank you.